In this video, I'll be walking through configuration and deployment of Snort as a host-based intrusion detection system to output alerts and log packets based on custom rules. So in my deployment here, I have our Ubuntu device and a Kali device. On the Kali device, I'm going to be sending pings and nmap scans, etc. to demonstrate Snort catching these things. But our, uh, on our Ubuntu device is where we're going to install Snort and configure it. I'm going to log in and I'm going to open up a new terminal to install NetTools and Snort. You don't necessarily have to install NetTools here, but I'm going to be using it to grab network information necessary for the configuration of Snort from the command line. So I have to install Snort. And here we're going to be prompted for two bits of information. The first one is which network interface Snort should use. So in the new tab, I'm going to run ifconfig. And we can easily see here that my network interface name is ENS3. I'm just going to write that in here. And then here we're prompted for the bit of the network which we're going to be defending with Snort. So because we're going to be doing host base, all we're going to have to copy here is our internal IPv4. And then one more time, it's going to ask you for the network interface. As long as that's the same value you just put in for the first step, everything should be fine. All right, so we're going to change directories to our snort configuration. And here we see a bunch of configuration files and then a rules folder. So just to show you in our rules folder, we have a bunch of rules installed by default, all of which we're going to disable for this demonstration. So I'm going to go sudo jedit snort.com. And this is the configuration file we're going to use to run snort and load our rules. So all the way down at the bottom here, there's a whole bunch of include lines, which is what we're going to be removing. To ignore these defaults. All right, we're going to keep just one here, include local rules, which is where we're going to be load writing our own rules. I'm going to go back to the rules folder. We're going to open that file up. So the basic rule template here is rule type, packet type, source address, source port, direction, destination address destination port and then our message and the only other requirement here is the rule ID so I'm going to write a rule to capture any ICMP packet and we're going to send a ping over from our attacker device to test our current configuration setup so we're going to go ICMP alert ICMP, any, any, to our home net, which we configured to be our local IPv4 address, if you followed me through the installation the same, any port, and message ICMP packet detected, SIT, custom rules have to be over 1 million, I believe, so one, two, three, one on the end there and that should be good so now we're going to run snort in console mode from etc snort snort.com oh i did not comment that out 
All right. So now we're going to go over to our attacker device. And we're going to send a ping to this device. Oh, I got to refresh this. And here we can see the ICMB packets being detected by Snort, which means our environment so far is all good. Now that we know our Snort environment's been properly configured, I'm going to walk through the process of writing detection rules based on specific TCP headers and opening log packets in Wireshark thereafter. So as per Snort documentation, there's a lot of customization to be had in writing rules, but right now we're just gonna take advantage of the TCP, TCP flag options, which you can find a list of if you open the documentation, but just to test this out, we're gonna use only F for thin scans. So now we're gonna go back to our rule file, and we're going to add a new one. To detect thin scans. So we're going to go alert TCP from any source to our home network, any port. We're going to message thin scan detected. And we're going to add our flag arguments. F. And then our ID. And that should be good. Go back and then snort again. We go back to our attacker. Yep, that detected all of our packets. So now we're going to go back here and we're going to open up that log file that Snort just created. Pseudo Wireshark. And our log files by default are saved to var log snort. And there are all the packets Snort detected and logged for us. And we could inspect them further here.